attendees are in listen only mode. Well, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the travel professional community and homebasetravelagent.com, we welcome you to this Avoya Travel webinar. My name is Sandy Elson. Many of you know me as the moderator of our weekly Tuesday live chats online. And yes, I do have a voice, too. We're very excited to have all of you here. We're also very excited to have with us today Scott Kep, CTC, MCC. Scott's topic today is Secrets to Marketing Success and Making More Money in 2014, brought to you by Avoya Travel. Anyone who's been in the travel business for more than about five minutes knows Scott, or at least knows who he is. With more than 25 years in retail travel, Scott Kep is the Vice President of Sales for Avoya Travel, one of the largest and most awarded travel companies in North America and beyond. Prior to joining Avoya, Kep served as president of the National Association of Career Travel Agents, a division of the American Society of Travel Agents, and one of the world's leading travel agent organizations. He held positions with Sabre Holdings as general, general manager of host agency Nexion and was president of Cruise Holidays International. Kep is also a sought after sales trainer and motivational speaker as well as a consultant for various retail organizations and travel industries suppliers. And we really thank Avoya for always being so supportive of the travel professional community, homebasetravelagent.com, and all of us who are travel agents. We appreciate the time Scott is taking today to participate in this webinar. Before we get started, a couple of things you should know. You are all muted so that you will be able to hear us, but we won't be able to hear you. We do this to cut down on background noise, like telephones ringing, dogs barking, and the ever-present clients beating down your door. We do, however, welcome questions. You can type in your questions in the question area you see on the right-hand panel on your screen. There's a word uh, that says questions with a little triangle next to it. If you click on that triangle, a question um, panel will show up where you can type in your questions. At the end of the webinar, we will get to as many questions as we can. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Scott so he can get started. I'll be back a few minutes before the end of our time to ask Scott your questions. Welcome, Scott. Well, thank you, Sandy. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here with everyone. And thank you all so much for spending some time of your day today on learning about the secrets to marketing success and making more money in 2014. And as you can see here, it does say brought to you by Avoya Travel. Uh, but I do want to say that, that um, a good portion of this program is really designed to be generic in its delivery in terms of helping all travel agents. So even if you decide that uh, affiliating with Avoya Travel or making Avoya Travel part of your business plan is not the right choice, um, it really is our, our pleasure to just share some general ideas and general thoughts on success within our industry. Um, as was mentioned in my bio, I've been in the industry about 25 years, and I'm very, very passionate about helping all travel agents. And it really is our pleasure to uh, really share ideas and share uh, thoughts that, uh, that have come to me over these 25 years and, and give ideas and concepts to all of you on the line, uh, because certainly our belief is, is the more professional and the more successful all travel agents are, It'll help certainly each of you. It'll help Avoya Travel. It'll help our entire industry. So it's, uh, it's certainly my pleasure to talk about that. But, of course, we'll also be sharing some ideas and concepts around Avoya Travel and what makes us unique and see if it is a good fit for you. So, again, with that, I want to thank all of you for being here today and certainly also want to thank uh, Joni and uh, Sandy for hosting me today and the, uh, the, the program so that, again, uh, I have this opportunity to share with all of you. Well, we're talking about marketing today, uh, and, and we're talking about marketing, and unfortunately my slide has uh, frozen, so I'm going to play around with this uh, to get this to move ahead here. Oh, there we go. All right. So um, that's me, just in case you haven't seen me anywhere along the way, and obviously I took it off the screen as fast as I possibly could, but it's... <laughs> Uh, it, it, I love this quote, agent who waits for cooked goose to fly in mouth is one. And by that, what I, I want to expand on that is that when it comes down to running your business, you actually really wear a few different hats. And everyone who is a 
uh, a home-based travel agent in particular and, uh, and running an agency, you really have a number of different hats. And I'll say that one of those hats, of course, is maybe the most logical one, that in many cases, if I was to ask you or poll you as to what your role is or what your job is or what you do, you'd probably come back and say, I'm a travel agent. And you might use a fancier term for it or a new term for it, travel counselor, travel professional, travel uh, dream advisor, whatever the case might be. But you would say you're a travel agent. And there's no question that that is indeed uh, what you probably spend the majority of your time on. However, there really are additional hats, which may be just as important, if not more important, in terms of bringing you success. So in other words, to be a fabulous travel agent is only one piece of the puzzle. And you've got to have uh, confidence, and actually even more than confidence, in these other areas to be able to have success by being a good travel agent. So there's no doubt that one of those hats being a travel agent. Now, the good news about being a travel agent is there's a lot of resources out that are available to you on how to improve being a travel agent. So again, the, the suppliers certainly provide fabulous webinars, training, brochures, information. We have a lot of associations in our industry, at the, the travel professional community, a lot of opportunities to learn and to expand your knowledge and to find resources to be a great travel agent. But if I can quote one of my favorite books that I would certainly recommend to all of you is uh, for someone who wrote about, I'll say, one of the other hats. And one of the other hats is being an entrepreneur, a business owner. You actually own a business. You're not obviously just a travel agent. You are an entrepreneur. You own a business. And Michael Gerber wrote a book called The E-Myth or The E-Myth Revisited. And to summarize that book, he says that the majority of entrepreneurs or small business owners never really hit success. They never really hit anywhere near what their potential is. And the primary reason is because they spend far too much time working in their business instead of on their business. And I think that certainly holds true for most travel agents and most home-based travel agents in that the amount of time spent being a travel agent uh, chews up so much of their time that they spend very little time actually planning on and learning about the other hats that they need to wear. And so let me expand on those hats then again. So we talked about one hat being a travel agent hat, another hat being an entrepreneur hat. And again, that is going to mean taking time uh, of really setting time aside. And it should be probably at least weekly, if not more so, of a couple hours each week. And really what that comes down is running your numbers. Look at the numbers. Look at how many people you've talked to during the week, how many uh, prospects have you reached during the week, and then how many conversations have you had, and then how many sales did you make, and what did those result in terms of business? You know, uh, again, sometimes say, well, you can't just major success with money. You can't just major success with sales. And I certainly would agree with that from the broad term of success. I think everyone on this call probably has a very different definition of what it takes to be successful. And certainly there is life balance issues and life ba and, and family uh, interests and all of the other things that you want and for each of you is a little different in terms of what will be success. But certainly from the standpoint of looking at our business, really what it does come down to is the scorecard. And the scorecard at the end of the day or the scoreboard, if you're a football fan or whatever the case is, is that winning means you've got to continue to increase the score. You've got to get more points on the board. And points come from sales. And so in most cases, the financial reward and, again, your ability to reach the goals that you want to reach, and I'm going to make the broad assumption that everyone on this call, uh, you, you may already all be successful, but you probably want to be a little more successful. And what that means is you want to have more sales more profitability in your business, which means that, again, you're going to be well-suited to actually then spend time on your business, and that means running the numbers. So it's putting on that entrepreneur hat at least for a few, ha few hours every week, and again, my recommendation is schedule this in your calendar. If you all are shaking your head and agreeing, yeah, that sounds good, unless you literally put it in your calendar that Friday mornings from 9 to 11 is when I'm going to run my numbers, look at my numbers, go through things, look at them, my plans for the following week, et cetera, you won't do it. It really comes down to time management and calendaring that. So, again, very important to put on that hat. 
The other hat, which certainly I spend a lot of my time talking about, and there's only maybe two or three of us in the whole industry that really spend most of our time talking about selling. And uh, the, the reality is, is that it's still a huge piece of your business. Once again, you can be a very good travel agent. You can have unbelievable product knowledge. You can provide uh, what, what maybe some people would consider great customer service. But at the end of the day, if you can't sell, you won't be in business very long. It's still a sales business. It happens to be a really fun business to, to be in, in terms of the product that you sell. Uh, but sometimes I think that gets in our way, too, because it is such a fun product that we focus more on learning about that product instead of, again, learning about sales. So my recommendation is the same thing, is you need to spend a couple hours a week minimum, and it probably should even be more, more than that, specifically working on your sales techniques, your sales abilities, your sales skills. And most of that training is probably going to come from what outside of this industry, other than myself and a couple other folks who actually teach sales techniques. Uh, most of it's going to come from other resources outside of our business. So, again, do some research. Find some of the other trainers out there. Find some of the other books on just plain old sales. It's not any different if you're selling a refrigerator or a car or anything else. It really just comes down to your ability to sell. And if that still makes you squirm a little bit, oh, I really don't want to be a salesperson. Oh, you know, that's not what I want to grow up to be. The reality is that being a salesperson is a fabulous profession. You are helping people achieve their dreams. You are finding their needs. You are assisting them on a journey that they actually want and they want to take. So both literally and figuratively, figuratively by the way, a journey in terms of travel, but a journey in terms of the shopping experience and the experience of reaching someone of your caliber to help them. But it really is all about help. Great sales is about helping people achieve their desires and their wants. So all of that, are uh, you've got the three hats. You've got a travel agent hat. You've got an entrepreneur or a business owner hat. You've got a sales hat. But there's actually another hat, which has become incredibly important in the travel agent community, that without this hat, it becomes amazingly difficult to be in business and to uh, really reach your goals and to become successful. And that really comes down to marketing. And it is the marketing side of the business. You know, for many, many years, travel agents had what I used to call the secret sauce. In other words, because uh, prior to the internet, there is only travel agents who had access to the GDSs and the special little fun codes that were on there with the Cross of Lorraine and all, the other, all those other ridiculous keys and, and codes that had to be known. But it really gave agents an advantage in that it was they were the only ones who had that secret sauce. And even to some extent with cruises and tours, that was true because they held the brochures, they held the information, so the customer had to seek out the travel agent. However, in today's world, as you all know, the consumer is more educated and has more access to information than at any time in history, almost to the point that our role is no longer giving out information. It's simply deciphering the information that the consumer already has. But the only way to get to that role of even deciphering that information is by getting their attention in the first place. I love this quote, and this actually comes from a quote from Peter Drucker, who's really one of the, the great minds in business. And Peter Drucker years ago said that the sole purpose of a business is, and I'll let you guess for a moment there, as to what the sole purpose of a business is, but it is, really comes down to finding and keeping customers. Now, what's unique about that is when I ask travel agents in many cases why someone should do business with them and why, uh, again, even, even comparing against going direct or doing their own bookings or do-it-yourself bookings, um, you know, why would they, and then against competitors, so why choose you specifically amongst all the other travel agents out there? In 90% of the cases, the term that comes up and is used over and over is, well, because I provide great customer service. I'm really good at customer service. Now, that may be true, and again, there's a whole other seminar we could talk about on that in terms of what makes great customer service, but at the end of the day, let's make the assumption that we're all good at that. What really great customer service is, is simply good sales skills, because the point of great customer service is a satisfied customer. Not only just satisfied, but someone who hopefully turns into a raving fan, and if they become a raving fan, 
then they will actually do the marketing for you and they're going to tell more people about you and of course repeat themselves and bring you referrals, etc. So when that happens, again, you are in essence by delivering customer service actually doing one of the most important aspects of marketing. The downside of that though is that that incredibly important part of marketing only occurs once somebody has purchased from you. Which means that, and to, that you had to be very good at sales to start with to get them to purchase from you. Which means that, of course, you had to also be a good travel agent that, that, that you knew what to sell to them. So you were combining those two hats at the time you then put on your marketing hat to get them to come back to you over and over again. But it also means that the entire process needed to start at the beginning of the funnel where you put on your marketing hat to get someone to know you even existed. And what happens is that most uh, surveys that have been done over the last, I'll say even 10 years in our industry that have used various publications, surveys, et cetera, and said, what is the biggest challenge of the typical home-based agent today? It has come across over and over again by well over half of the agency owners that their biggest challenge is marketing. In other words, getting the next customer, finding someone to pick up the phone and call them. How do they get someone to come to them? Now, again, the definition of marketing can, uh, it can vary. And again, if you read a lot of marketing books, you're going to find everybody has their own definition. But this is the one that I like the best, which is anything and everything done to either acquire, retain, or increase profits from customers. Now, I already talked about the retain portion, right? We can put that into a category of customer service, great customer service, to keep them there, to keep them happy. Of course, it's going to go beyond that, that you have to also keep in contact with them well beyond when that last trip is over to make sure that you do retain them. On the increasing of profits, well, that's just a pretty simple aspect of getting them to either upgrade, move up, go to a better product, but in essence, spend more money on highly profitable products. Now, again, that comes down to, in many cases, part of the sales process, et cetera. But when we think about marketing in most cases, we probably are looking at that acquisition part. And that's the part that most agencies really struggle with, not only because it's extremely expensive, but because it also is incredibly time-consuming. Now, in most cases, a lot of marketing books and college seminars that are out there are going to talk about the three P's of marketing. That's a famous comment within the marketing world, that there are the three P's of marketing. <coughs> Excuse me. My belief is there is well beyond the three. There's actually five P's of marketing. And, uh, and of course, I've missed the slide that, that has the five. But you know, you've got price. You've got promotion. You've got product. You've got placement. You've got uh, uh, all of the different P's, people, which is the other side of this, and determining who, indeed, you're going to be doing business with. And, and really what that leads me to is moving from the P's to the M's, or to the W's, sorry, and the H, which sneaks in there. But I love this quote from Rudyard Kipling. Actually, it's a poem. I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. And I bring this up because in many ways, uh, marketing becomes incredibly overwhelming and almost scary to a lot of agency owners. Because again, in most cases, most of you got into this business because you are great travel agents. You know travel, you're passionate about travel, you're excited about travel. Um, and, and that's all wonderful and it's great, but it's actually only one of the hats that you wear. And then you might try to learn a bit more about the sales side and, and again, occasionally, hopefully spend a little time looking at your numbers and and uh, looking at a, at a business plan and some goals and, and setting all that up so that you're wearing those hats. But when it comes to putting on the marketing hat, it sometimes can be overwhelming thinking, oh, I need a PhD in this. And, you know, how do I keep up with all of the trends? And, and again, some of the classes I think that are available make it a very overwhelming kind of uh, subject that sounds like you need a statistics degree. But I bring it down to this particular quote because it really is the summary of marketing. And it really comes down to having an answer to each of those six serving men, right? So each of those six serving men need to be addressed by you. And it's not in the exact order. Of course, uh, Rudyard didn't know this when he was writing this, that I was going to dissect this like this. But really, when you look at this, and because uh, unfortunately we're all on mute, I can't necessarily ask you, but you say, well, when it comes to marketing and going down the marketing path of trying to get people to pay attention to you, in other words, out of the millions of choices that are available to 
tra- to uh, travelers now in terms of book it yourself, going direct, finding an individual travel agent, et cetera. Uh, obviously, there, there is a lot of choices, a lot of competition. So really, where do you focus? And certainly, there's a lot of different uh, uh, opportunities to learn about social media and marketing and advertising, et cetera, where they tend to focus in on the how. So they immediately jump to and begin to talk about, well, this is how you do this within this media. and This is how you run an ad here. and This is how you can buy a pay-per-click over there. When the truth is, we need to really step back and say, well, what is more important than that to have an answer to before we go any further? And my, my opinion on that is that of these, you've got, again, each of those five Ps you can see there, but those really are replaced by Rudyard Kipling's serving men, right? So you've got the, the, the what. Now, a lot of people might say, well, that's what I need to figure out first. I'll specialize on the what, and that's going to become my specialization. Now, pretty much everyone in our industry, when you go to seminars and even hear from our suppliers, will say that one of the paths to success that really is required is not to try to be everything to everybody. And we certainly believe that. I certainly believe that personally, and Avoya Travel certainly does, that you've got to specialize. However, product is only a piece of the specialization because, in truth, I think the most important of these, and again, if I was to ask you, is which one is the most important, and then the question is why, and you might say, well, is that the answer or is that the question? No, that actually is a question. Which of these is most important? Now, in some cases, you might answer with why. In other words, the, the answer to why should I do business with you? Uh, I certainly think that is an extremely important one to have firmed up and complete and ready to go before you do any marketing, before you go spend a minute on social media, before you go spend a dollar in any other media or pay-per-click or, or newspaper or you name it, or go out the door and try to speak to groups, et cetera. Uh, all of those, to take that uh, step of the what is in essence the how of going to market without the answer of why you are wasting your time and wasting your money. In other words, you should have, and I certainly recommend that you actually have a draft, a written draft of exactly why someone should do business with you. Why should they choose you among all the competitors against going direct, against anybody online, against this, that, or the other thing? Where and uh, why? Is it important that they do business with you? And again, draft that up that it's in a unique manner and that it's not just because I provide good customer service. Because remember, that's what all your competitors are going to say. You've got to have a unique approach to the marketplace. When you have the why, then you need to address the who. And actually, you could almost reverse the two. My answer, in other words, for the most important of all of these is who. You need to know who you want to do business with. Not necessarily based on a product only, not based on where you work. The fact is people aren't going to choose to work with you because you work at home or you don't work at home. Good news, it doesn't have a negative stigma, but it doesn't have necessarily a positive one either. It just simply puts the emphasis on, okay, I don't really care where you work. You can be in Starbucks or in your garage or wherever it is. What I do care about is why should I do business with you? What are you going to do for me? And you can answer that question broadly, but that is going to actually be a negative for you unless you have a specific who in mind. Here's the thing. Almost every marketing class ever taught and still taught today is going to say one of the first decisions you have to make in marketing is your target audience. Who is your target? And again, when I ask this question to travel agents over and over again, I get usually the answer of anybody or anyone with money or anyone thinking about travel or anybody I ever come within five yards of, or whatever the case might be. Folks, those are bad answers. And if if you're uh, you're sitting there thinking, yeah, I probably would have said I I want to do business with anybody, you know, because baby needs new shoes and I want to get some more sales, the reality is you've got to determine what uh, the client looks like. Visualize them. Who is it? What are they demographically? Are they in the baby boomer set or a millennial? Uh, What kind of product might they be interested in? What do you bring? What is that answer of why specifically addressed to that group? And I will tell you, in today's world, the more finite that group is, the more success you will have. Then you can determine what product to bring to them. Then you can take it to the next step. I like the study that was done a while back by, uh, again, as you can see here, Dr. Weaver and Dr. Lawton, 
that uh, they, they did surveys of the highly successful American travel agencies, and I love this, the major outcome of the study is the identification of effective relationship building as the key Marco theme underlying travel agency success. There is no doubt relationship building comes from sales, but it also comes from trying to build relationships with the right people to start with. And again, that is coming down with knowing the who in which who you are going to primarily identify with. You know, sometimes I do seminars and I say it's really important to figure out who you want to do business with. And every once in a while, agencies will say, well, you know, I think it's really important that, that I start to sell to a much younger crowd. I want to sell to those in the 20s because if they're in their 20s, then, you know, they'll be working with me for years and years and years to come. And my answer always is, oh, that sounds great. I think that's a great idea. So I assume you do most of your communications with your thumbs. And if they look at me with a kind of a blank stare, then I'm going to tell them flat out, you know what, that's not your market. Don't even think about it because the way that communication happens for 20-year-olds is significantly different than it is for a baby boomer. Not saying it's not a good market or that it's a bad market, but it's a different market in every way, in the way they communicate, the way that uh, that you would work with them, the things that you'll advise them on. So in other words, find what you're comfortable with and then go after the who that meets that particular product. If you don't have the answer to the why and you don't have a specific target market, then what happens is, is that you end up, as you can see here, competing on price. And I, I love this quote. This was, uh, honestly, this is almost about a 15-year-old quote. There are sleazy travel agents who kick back their own commission to their clients. It will be the end if those guys take over. Well, let me, let me tell you something. They've taken over. There's no doubt this is happening. It's going to continue to happen. To put our heads in the sand and say that, ooh, there's travel agencies out there or travel agents who, who rebate or give onboard credits or do this or that or the other thing is to basically ignore reality. You know, those same travel agents that complain about other agents who, who cut and cut prices also go shop at Costco. How come we're not guilty shopping at Costco when maybe we should be buying that ketchup down at Safeway and spending a little bit more money? The reality is, is that we are in a world that is price driven. It is, it is, yes, based on value, but at the end of the day, it is competitive. The consumer has an unbelievable array of information and choices. And unless they are convinced that there is more to the decision than price, they, you will lose in the game because there will be somebody who eventually will sell it for cheaper and throw in a keychain, and then you're going to move on, and, and, and they're going to move on from you. A lot of people say, oh, there's no such thing as loyalty. I completely disagree with that. Loyalty can be built, but it cannot be built on price. It's got to be built on what else you are bringing. It doesn't mean that, therefore, somebody's going to pay $400 more or $200 more, or frankly, even $50 more to do business with you. You could be the most amazing travel agent in the world. You could have knowledge that's extraordinary. But at the end of the day, if somebody else is offering $50 off and you don't start at that level or match that level, uh, everything that you say is basically a promise still to be delivered. And therefore, they're not even going to bother giving you the chance to fulfill that promise. So again, if you compete on price, you provide no other reason to buy from you. It doesn't mean that you, can't, you, that you can get away with not being competitive. You've got to be competitive, but then give them the reason to also stay with you and, and be in business with you. I love this quote from David Nealman, who, although they've had some issues over the last couple of years, I still love their product with JetBlue Airways. We wanted to be a customer service company and a marketing company and a direct marketing company that connects with its customers. Oh, and we happen to have airplanes. And I love that if you think about that from our perspective of being a travel agent, to some extent it's the same kind of scenario, is that re really your, your role and your goal and when you put on your entrepreneur hat should be talking about how many customer relationships do I have? How am I building my customer relationship? As much and just as important as how many sales did you make, et cetera, is how many um, uh, uh, people are, am I connecting with and are they the right people and are they – are they buying the right things from me? So therefore, am I reaching the right people? And oh, by the way, I happen to be in travel. It's the same kind of a thing that I suggest that you go to because consumers don't differentiate retailers by their value proposition. It's very important. So not just strictly their price or even saying that they're going to provide great customer service, but as much as they do by the experience they present. A memorable experience is one that thrills or excites customers. 
And again, this is from Ernst and Young's research. And I think what's important about that is understanding that in marketing, you have to attract their attention and you have to begin that memorable experience right with their marketing. In other words, you've got to give them something they can't Google. You can Google and then come up with all the prices that are out there. You can find information. There is their product knowledge simply displaying and, and uh, providing product knowledge is not the solution for success anymore. It's not going to also drive people to you. Instead, what needs to happen, and this is, again, based on a book by, uh, uh, well, his name skipped me, but I think it's on the next slide, so I'll say it then, but a book that he wrote called Overpromise and Overdeliver. And what I love about that is, again, I think that really sums up what has changed in our world. In the old, day, in the old days, you could kind of underpromise. You know, you could say, oh, I don't have a deal or, you know, there's nothing specific with pricing I'm going to do here. I'm just going to offer it to you and, and say that, well, I'm a true professional and so I never discount, et cetera. Uh, the truth is, is that you're probably not going to people to have anyone pay attention to you. You've got to be competitive, but then you have to, at that point, overpromise. Yes, I'm going to give you the best value, plus I'm going to give you an extraordinary experience. And then you've got to tell them, by the way. In other words, overpromising means you make the promise. Don't just tell them they're going to get great customer service. Tell them specifically what you're going to do for them. And if you don't know what the answer to that is, then you've got more work to do. You've got to sit down and figure out what that is. And then you tell them up front, and then you over-deliver even more. Rick Barrera was the answer. And, again, by answering those questions that were there, you can see, again, it really comes down to kind of reinventing the over-promise. It is to basically so, so that, again, the customer – is going to somehow land upon you amongst all these competitors and all of the, the direct business and everything else that's happening in the industry out there, you somehow need to be able to rise above that. And that, again, is going to come from making the promise up front and then delivering even more than that. And, again, that is, is the, the key to how you can make this happen in marketing. But marketing, as we talk about, is really, no matter how you do it, is going to still take a tremendous amount of your time and a tremendous amount of your money to basically fill in the funnel at the top end. In other words, to get customers to pay attention to you. Even if you have that why question and even it answered and you've got, uh, again, all of the other pieces put together, there is no doubt, and again, if we go to all the different seminars that are out there and programs out there, we know that what, what happens is, is we end up thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm going to go to 17 different seminars on social media, and I'm going to learn all these things about social media, which is fine, and, and social media is great. But, again, what it really is is a fabulous communication vehicle for those who primarily already know you exist. You know, it goes back again 15 years ago, the silver bullet was a website. You build a website, spend five or $10,000 on a website, customers will flock to you. Well, not quite. It doesn't quite work that way because why? It is a very competitive business and it's expensive to compete within the marketing arena. And that kind of leads me then to, well, then how do you help solve that issue? If it is indeed the number one issue that agencies have, they know they're great travel agents, they, they know that they can sell, they just don't have enough customers to sell to. Well, then one of the first suggestions I'm going to make is to affiliate with a host agency. And it certainly is one of the most important questions you can ask yourself. Now, I'm going to give you a, a quick answer to this, to, to question number one. And I'm not going to do it from a biased perspective of a lawyer. I'll, I'll simply say the answer is yes in 99.9% .9 of, of the business. And, uh, and unless you're doing probably in excess of at least $2 million on your own, then I believe you will benefit tremendously, both financially and from a support perspective, by affiliating with a good host agency. And there certainly are a lot of excellent host agencies out there. And each host agency has a little different approach to the business, a little different approach of what their strength might be, and you need to find where that is a good match. Uh, but there's also one particular reason why I think you should think about choosing Avoya Travel. And, of course, as I mentioned, we are going to lean a little bit towards giving you some of the reasons why Avoya Travel is a good choice. And, and, I, and again, my recommendation is that to do the research. Look at all the various host agencies. Uh, we don't pretend to be for everyone. We don't pretend to have the model that's going to be perfect for everyone. But there is some things that every host agency really has as a little bit different, and I want to at least talk you through five of the top reasons why Avoya Travel might be the right choice for you. So 
starting is just to say who is Avoya Travel. And again, our goal is to always be the best of class in every area of support and in business for our independent agencies. We are a family-owned company. We're one of the largest, most awarded travel companies in the world. Uh, we are a host agency by definition, meaning that we do all of our business, all of our sales happen through independent agencies. So independent agencies affiliated with us, we do not have people who sell travel within, uh, within our walls here or that, uh, that are employees. They simply are all independent agencies. And that means we have a shared success model, meaning that the only way we can grow, the only way we can continue the extraordinary success that we've had is by helping our independent affiliates become more successful. Well, how do we do that? Well, reason number five is support. Um, and support really is, again, something you'll hear almost every host agency talk about, and there's no doubt that most of them are very good uh, at providing good support. I believe we have some technology solutions and programs which makes ours even better. We have probably the highest ratio of paid employees uh, who are in the support side. We have well over 100 employees who are uh, here to support our network, which, again, we have only about uh, over 500 independent affiliates within our system. So, Again, while we are not the biggest in the numbers, we are one of the largest in the world in terms of sales. So you can kind of run some quick numbers there and realize the opportunity uh, simply of being in Avoya is the sales opportunity is huge. And that's partly because we have so many support personnel who aren't busy selling travel, but are 100% in the business of helping you become more successful. And the other reason our support is unique is because it is a bit of a smaller number and to become a, a a, a, an affiliate of Avoya Travel, we want people to be very committed to the travel industry. Now, there's not one set requirement. There's not something we say you, you know, have to be in a business 10 years. We have various paths available for folks depending on what your level of experience is within the travel business, uh, and we'll help kind of uh, design that for you in terms of what the steps would be to become affiliated with us. But at the end of the day, we have very committed travel agencies uh, and travel agency owners who again help each other, learn from each other because of the extraordinary support system we have, and again all of the folks that we have supporting you. And that includes everything from the accounting side, commission, customer care, marketing specialists, group departments, etc. So again, we've got uh, all the folks there to help you. Plus, we have extraordinary educational opportunities. We have a an award-winning mastermind program. It's really one of the only ones in its uh, in existence where we have small groups of our independent affiliates who are led by uh, an employee here who's a professional uh, and really helps coordinate the groups, but it is for peer sharing and where there's groups of eight to 10 to share ideas and, uh, and again, learn from each other. It is a very successful program, very unique. We have an annual conference, uh, usually on a, on a cruise ship or a, a great destination. Avoya Academy, again, which is a more hands-on approach uh, in person, regional roundtables, FAM, seminars at sea, and of course, weekly ongoing online education. Well, reason number four is our technology, and our technology really is, uh, is extraordinary. It's well known in the industry as being uh, one of the very best at what I call a soup to nuts approach. And it, what I mean by that is that when you think about what your technology needs are from the standpoint of, of being successful within travel, uh, there's a number of different types of programs that you probably need to have access to. And in most cases, they're actually different programs. So you have to learn various booking engines from the various different suppliers you work with. Then you have to learn a customer relationship management program on where all of the information is stored and where did I keep that information. Then, of course, you need a, uh, an accounting program that might track all of the commissions earned and due and when final payments are due, et cetera, and creates invoices. Then you might need a calendar program and an email program to create email and, to, uh, and then to calendar reminders and, uh, and appointments. Well, the reality is, is that Agent Power is all of those things in one system. It is one of the most inclusive, fully uh, integrated programs that's available to you. And it just creates efficiency, which is what technology is all about. So our goal is to keep it as easy to use as possible and also, again, to just create great efficiencies for you. The beauty of our program is an online operating system. It is proprietary. It cannot be uh, used or found anywhere else other than if you are a, an affiliated agency with Avoya Travel. It is uh, available to work on iPads and iPhones and smartphones and 
uh, completely portable. We have actually agencies who are booking cruises while they're on African safaris and are booking African safaris while they're on cruises. So there's uh, an ability to really work anytime, anywhere on a, on a portable basis with this system. And again, it gives you access to all of the things that we provide, including, again, we do have an air car hotel rental system that, again, is available to book right through our agent power system. We also have designed it so it actually does a lot of the most difficult work, I think, in today's world for you, and that is to keep up with the various pricing and promotions available. Even if you specialize in only one cruise line, as you all know, there might be 42 different pricings available on that cruise line, from senior rates to regional rates to this offer to that offer to be born on a Tuesday. And sometimes it's extremely difficult to find out what's combinable with what and what that price ends up being. Well, we do a lot of that on an automated basis in our booking engine and search results. You can see here how simple it is, the way that we have laid it out in terms of inside Ocean View, balcony suite shows the best price based on some of the input that you read, that you've put in there in terms of if they're senior, et cetera, and you can sort out and find the best pricing. Again, this is proprietary in our program. So the technology is key. <clears throat> One of the other reasons, and I will mention that these top five reasons are not just created by myself or our marketing team. They actually were the, from a survey that we did of our independent affiliates asking them, why did you join? And probably more importantly, why do you stay with Avoya Travel? And these were the top five reasons that they came up with. And so number three would be our reputation. And again, I, I ask you to, to do your research against all host agencies is to ask any supplier uh, what their thoughts are of Avoya Travel. And I think you'll find that we are known for our integrity and professionalism. We have a brand that's actually a consumer recognized brand, uh, which really there's almost no other host agency that has. Uh, there may be a franchise that, that begins to uh, try to play in that world, but we actually have a very powerful brand in which you can capitalize on. Plus, speaking of brands, we also have the power of American Express. Um, so again, being this, this kind of a brand and the unique aspect of our model has driven us to be Travel Agents of the Year for these brands and many more as we continue to grow our business with them and multiple different suppliers. Plus, of course, we have won a number of awards uh, within the industry and even outside of the industry because of our model, because of what we do, and probably we're most proud of the fact that so many of our independently affiliated agencies have been listed within the top 25 agents. We've had three or four a year for the last three years, and uh, there's no other host agency that comes close in terms of listing the being listed within the top 25 agents of Travel Agent Magazine. And so again, uh, just tremendous success because of the affiliation with Avoya Travel. And as I mentioned, we have the power of the blue box. And certainly as a, an American Express Travel Representative Network Agency, uh, we do have the ability to uh, use the American Express logo and offer the benefits that they provide. And that certainly is not only just a brand, but uh, but again, they have Mariner Club exclusive hosted cruises, which are a great uh, advantage. They have a number of other card benefits. And then, of course, we also have the Pay With Points program, where only American Express travel representative uh, network agencies can actually take points that folks have on their American Express card to pay for their vacations. And we are one of the uh, largest in the world in terms of redeeming those points. So great opportunity. Well, reason number two might be a little bit of a surprise because you might think that that would be number one, but uh, income certainly is an important aspect. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program here is that it really comes down to uh, that's the score. It's the score that is being kept in the game. And uh, again, I think most of you are on this call because you want to increase the amount of sales that you do. And that is going to come from, again, the decisions that you make in the way that you wear those various hats that I talked about. And with Avoya Travel, by making the decision of uh, affiliating with Avoya Travel, you can see here that Bob Dickinson, the former president of Carnival Cruise Line, uh, said that, the, that our agencies make 10 to 20 times more in sales than the average home-based travel. And I will say I believe that number is significantly higher now uh, in terms of what the averages show in their most recent studies. So there is tremendous potential to increase your income. Now, why is that? Well, again, it's because of our shared success model. We're only successful if you are. And so, again, everything we do is to help build your sales. We have the Avoya Advantage, and this just comes down to our ability because of our size and our relationship with our suppliers to get exclusive offers. Uh, we have thousands and thousands of group programs and group opportunities for you to have competitive advantages. 
um, and our ability to focus, to allow you to focus on specialization. I mentioned how important that is. And in our model, you have the ability of choosing what kind of products, and to some extent the folks then that are buying those products, uh, you work with. And so again, trying to be everything to everyone is in most cases a failed recipe, but trying to really get to know a few brands, a few types of product extremely well is going to lead to success. And our whole business model is based on that. Well, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the session, is if you look at most of the surveys that have been done out there, and this one actually comes from Agent at Home magazine, where what's the area that you feel you the most assistance? You can see right off the top there, marketing again. It's uh, significantly and always one of the number one reason agencies cite as to why they haven't hit their full success. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the reason is, well, it's expensive. Um, it, it's risky. Every time you do something in marketing, you're not quite sure what the outcome is going to be. You've got to spend money on it and or time. And a lot of people say, well, you know, but all of my marketing doesn't cost me enough money. I'm on social media. Well, I'll guarantee if you're really working hard on social media, you're churning a tremendous amount of time with your marketing hat on. And the problem is with the marketing hat is no matter how long you wear that hat, if it doesn't lead to wearing the sales hat uh, more, you're going to eventually not have the results that you want. So the goal has to be on a daily basis to have your sales hat on more than any other hat. And in most cases, most people spend most of their time wearing their travel agent hat uh, and then occasionally wearing their sales hat. But what's happening in today's world is a lot of agencies are spending a tremendous amount of time on their marketing just to do what they can to try to get the phone to ring, meaning that they can't spend enough time on sales which leads to the number one reason that Avoya advantage, the, for the Avoya Advantage and the reason that uh, agencies have decided to affiliate with us and stay with us is our Avoya Live Leads program. And, you know, every host agency and, and good consortia certainly will talk about their marketing programs, and they will offer up uh, email marketing programs. They'll offer up programs on direct mail. Uh, marketing assistance, marketing advice. And they're all good programs, and they all do a nice job with that. Many host agencies use actually consortia programs, uh, and so they're actually third-party programs. And again, they all deliver exactly what they say, and they do a fine job. The big difference is, is there's, you need two things to get that marketing to work. One is you've got to provide the list in most cases, or if not, you are buying a list, which again has a very low percentage rate of success, um, and or you have to spend money and, again, time in using those programs and developing those programs and taking full advantage of them to be able to help you get more bodies in the door. However, the difference with Avoya is that we actually don't have a marketing program. In truth, we, we do, and you, you're allowed certainly to have your customers take advantage of our marketing. But the big difference is, is that we actually do the marketing. We are marketing for you. We are one of the largest uh, presence and brands on the internet. We compete against the gorillas. We compete against the big agencies that are out there. And we compete in a way that then provides you the leads that we market for. And we spend millions and millions of dollars to develop these leads. And they are offered to you at no additional cost. They're offered to you either via your phone or web or tech services. And you decide to take that lead if it is offered to you. They come in 24-7. There's no competition. We only, once you take a lead, it doesn't go to someone else. There's not, you know, three Avoya agencies all competing for the same lead. It just comes in. Once you accept that lead, it is your lead to then determine how you're going to work that lead and try to sell them. And again, it's based on specialties. So we're going to feed leads to you based on what you know best. And it allows you then to take off that marketing hat and not just take it off, but to actually outsource it. Again, most smart businesses in the world today will say that there are certain things that they need to outsource because it is not their forte. For most people in our industry, they are fabulous travel agents, but they didn't get into this business because they are marketing geniuses. The reality is that we've got, again, a number of people, all of them quite young, which is extraordinary, in our office basically focused on marketing for you. So you are outsourcing your marketing so that your time can be spent on what you do well, which is sales and being a great travel agent. And that then allows you, because of being able to focus there, to earn the best income you possibly can. And of course, because of our size, being one of the largest in the world, we, act, we have the highest tier commission of really anyone in the industry. 
Now, I mentioned marketing, and certainly we do provide opportunity for you to take advantage of the marketing that we have. So our website, which, again, we spend millions of dollars on keeping it up to date, making sure it is incredibly effective, is basically available to you in a carbon copy format so that it's the same content, the same information, the same search abilities as our site at Avoya Travel, and yet you have a little bit more personalization with it. You can see an example here. It's got a picture of you and uh, an About You page that we actually can then use and, and get some of your background and some of your information. That's at no cost. We don't charge you anything additional for your website. One of the most robust and, uh, and effective websites in the world in travel, and it comes to you at absolutely no cost. So again, it's got real-time pricing, content, etc. So all the different areas of marketing, from email marketing, online, SEO, direct mail, web design, all of social media, everything. We've got people who are working here full time just to be at the forefront of each of these media choices. Because as you can see here, it, through the funnel, you've got to start with leads. No matter what, you have to start with leads. And when you start with leads, you are then going to move them down to prospects. And then based on your skill, they'll become a customer. So what we can offer you, well, reason number five, again, our extraordinary support and support team, our technology, it is world class, and again, it is only proprietary to us, and it, and it is a soup to net program, our reputation of integrity and professionalism, and our income potential to each of you because of our live leads program. And uh, just to cover some of the numbers here before we get to some questions at the end, Sandy, is I did want to let folks know that, <laughs> that when a lot of times at looking at host agencies, one of the first things that everybody looks at, well, what's your split? What's your split? And let me just uh, make a, a recommendation. When you look at joining a host agency, it's not about the split. It's about how much money is in your bank account every week. Now, the beauty of that is that, first of all, we do pay commissions every week on an automated direct deposit basis. You're never going to be waiting for a check. It comes out automatically every week based on, again, when the income comes in from the supplier. Well, what is our split? Well, if it's your customer and it's somebody you've already been doing this business with or even after you join Avoya and you uh, meet someone at the grocery store, that's your customer. And with your customer, uh, you will retain 80% of, again, our top tier commission. And we will take 20% just for the support side and all of the, uh, the, the uh, other programs that we have technology-wise to support you. We think that's a, a competitive number. On the other side is that if you take one of the offered leads in which we've spent the millions of dollars up front, we do not charge you for that lead, and then you take the lead and book that customer, you will retain 30% of the commission, and then Avoya will retain 70% to, recur to recoup the marketing cost. Now, some of you might look at that and go, oh, my goodness, how in the world could I ever make, uh, make enough money at a 30% split? Well, when you think about it, it really is about a 3 to 1 ratio. Right? So even if you were keeping 100% today, it's about a 3, thir three to 1 ratio. And I'm going to guarantee that really if you think about how much marketing that you're doing and time you're spending in marketing and money you're spending in marketing, that if you could indeed just simply triple your sales without spending any of that time or any of that money, you can see that the income potential is extraordinary. And this is why most of the agencies who end up affiliating with us might come in and say, well, you know, 80-20, they've got all these other great tools and support. I'm going to do most of my business there. They eventually migrate over and take more of the offered leads because of the opportunity to excel in their income, which is why we have so many agencies who, again, have uh, exceeded their goals in terms of their income and the opportunity to make real money as a travel agent and doing what they love. So is Avoya the best fit for you? Well, we'd like it to be. We hope it is. But again, we're going to recommend that you do your research. Understand we're looking for folks who are committed to the business, who really want to have an impact. We've got uh, our, our uh, talent scouts who are more than happy to answer questions for you. But if you have an entrepreneurial spirit and you have integrity and professionalism, then most likely it, it really is the time for you to look at Avoya so that we, you can take off that marketing hat, set it aside, know that's being done for you, and focus on what you do best. So contact us today for current pricing. We've got some special rates available right now. And actually, uh, for those who join Avoya prior to February 28th, we are offering a $100 American Express gift card. So uh, again, our, our current pricing is it's $195 to, as, a, as an affiliation fee. And then there is a $49 a month charge 
However, that is waived if you do uh, $1,000 in gross commissions in any given month. And so uh, that is waived if, again, you're doing at least a modicum of business. And, uh, and again, our goal is obviously we don't want folks to be paying fees. We have no interest in fees. We just want folks to be successful. So great opportunity to, uh, to join at this point and, uh, and to do so at a very reduced price. And with that, Sandy, I'm going to open it up for questions and see if there's any questions for our last remaining few minutes here. Great. Well, thank you, Scott. That was an amazing presentation. I hope you can see me standing up and jumping up and down and applauding. Um, I really <laughs> learned a lot about um, making a more successful travel business. And you're right that we all have to remember that we are really in the sales business more than anything else. So thank you for that terrific presentation. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Um, Ken wants to know if you fulfill a lead and they become a regular client, what happens to the commission structure in that case? That's a great question, and it does stay the same. So in other words, once if the client begins as an Avoya customer, is driven through the marketing of Avoya, uh, it does stay at that same split. So as they come back and repeat with you over and over again, it does stay the same. And the reason for that is that, quite honestly, we lose money on, on uh, the first bookings in most cases. It's, uh, it's extremely expensive to generate leads, and so therefore we can't just make it off on that first uh, opportunity. So, uh, so the split does stay the same based on where the client originated. Excellent, thank you. Um, Tish wants to know um, if an agency joins Avoya, is there any kind of contract uh, for an independent agency? Is it just a year over year fee? How does that work? It's a great question, and, and the first answer is yes, there is a contract, and my recommendation is, is that any host agency you would join, you would certainly want to make sure that they have a contract. Uh, uh, you really don't want to ever affiliate with an agency that doesn't have a contract and, uh, and has already really spent the time and the energy to make sure that it, it fulfills all the rules of law, so extremely important. And yes, we do have one, and ours is an annual contract. Uh, however, again, you, you can uh, you know, certainly get out of the contract with, uh, with the proper notice throughout the year. There is a renewal fee of $99 per year, uh, and, uh, but it is, a, it is a, an annual contract. And uh, Hilda would like to know if uh, she joins Avoya. Is she covered under Avoya's errors and omissions insurance, or, um, or do agencies get their own? So it's another great question, and here's again my recommendation, not only for Avoya, but for every host agency and every agency out there. The answer to your question is yes, we do have an errors and omissions policy, and yes, it does cover. However, understand that every host agency's policy is only going to be limited in terms of the coverage that it provides down to the affiliated agency. Because, <laughs> excuse me, you are independent contractors, and you're not employees of the company, the company that holds the insurance, this will be true of any host agency, is going to be limited in terms of how much that insurance is going to cover down to the independent affiliate. So any host agency that says, oh, join us, you can be, you know, you're, you're covered by our E&O. It's not necessarily a false statement, but it also does not mean that you are really covered the way you should be. Now, that being said, for Avoya Travel, you are not required to get your own E&O. And again, we do have a very extensive errors and emissions policy ourselves. However, we highly recommend, if you are serious in this business, and this is a, a business that, again, you plan on being in and, and really making a, a, a difference in, then you need to have your own errors and admissions insurance. Extremely important. And, again, I'm going to give you that answer, whether that's Avoya Travel or any other host agency. Uh, that, and anybody who doesn't recommend that you have your own, I would be suspect of the answer that they're giving you uh, as, a, as a sales pitch. So I think it's really important for all agencies if they're serious in the business, to have their own E&O insurance. Fantastic. We have some more questions. Unfortunately, we're out of time, so I urge everybody that has additional questions to please get in touch with Avoya. You can see the phone number on the lower right-hand corner of this last slide. And I would like to thank Scott Kep and Avoya so very, very much for this fantastic presentation. And thank you to all the travel agents who are attending. We appreciate it, and we will see you next time. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.